Okay, so welcome guys. This is uh, a webinar I'm running today is on how to run seminars and webinars to attract new patients, plus how to implement a new program to run group consults and deliver one to many, which is one of the most exciting things I've seen in health for some time. And I'll go through that right at the end. <clears throat> so today what you're going to take away here is a, a practice model that I believe you need to adopt that will allow you a six, six or seven figure income without getting bored or burnt out or working any harder. In fact, you'd be working less. Plus the strategy around webinars and seminars that will create this instant authority for you. It'll help as many people as possible and create a waiting list of patients that will be paying you, um, I guess, top, you know, top dollar in order to get the best results because they see you as an authority and know you as an authority. This is one of the best things we've done over the years that all the clients have worked with. Um, as I said, we're also going to show you this new technology around SMAs or shared medical appointments that will give you up to 12 times better return on your fees, but also your time. So it's a group consult modality, really effective. Um, thanks to Anne and Ben in Melbourne. Anne and Ben run Helping Nature Heal, and they are our, um, they've asked me to run this on behalf of them and promote it to their people in their network. So I really appreciate them being here and uh, putting the word out. Um, they're also great clients and been with me for many years on and off and seen good results with me as a result. Um, so let's get into this. The three big mistakes I want you to realise you need to avoid is that most practitioners I know in health will spend thousands of hours and dollars upskilling themselves as a practitioner, and that doesn't have any direct business benefit for them. And they get better as a practitioner, their patients benefit, but they don't actually benefit in business, so they just end up working harder and become more qualified. Um, I'm going to suggest that's not a good way to go. Certainly upskill yourself, but upskill yourself in business as well. And most people in health don't do any kind of business training at all. So the fact you're here, well done to you. You're actually doing the number one key thing I'll tell you to do, which is go study your craft, be a good business person, as well as a great practitioner. Um, and, and get support in that process, whether it's with me or in one of my groups or, or elsewhere, but have, have business support as you would in, um, in learning a health modality. You get support in doing that. And the big mistake I want to really make sure everyone avoids is this, what I call the, the practitioner career trap. And I'll go into that in a minute, how to avoid it, what to do differently. Um, bear in mind, this is a roadmap. It's going to give you an hour's worth of outline of what to do. It's going to give you a lot of good content, but you need to implement and you'll need to do more, obviously, to put this stuff in place. So this is sort of the, the pivot point, if you like, behind um, changing things remarkably for your outcomes. Quick intro to me, that's me about 20 something, maybe 30 years ago now, in my early 20s, I was a natural bodybuilder and I used to work hard in the gym, I didn't own gyms and I was in the fitness industry at a time when the industry was really a backyard industry, there was like three gyms in Brisbane, we were the biggest one. Um, and you know, I tell, I show this photo to everyone because I was so proud of myself, what I attained as a bodybuilder. All people generally look at now is they look past the muscles, look straight and ask me about the haircut, which was early 90s, which was quite acceptable back then. Um, but in that time, I've, I've worked and got out of the fitness industry, saw the, the, the inherent uh, benefits and the flaws in that industry and moved into applying that into natural health. And we created Health Leaders Academy uh, about 10 years ago. Um, worked with all these people over the years, met hundreds and hundreds of practitioners quite intimately and figured out some, some ways to make things work differently. So it's a fairly disruptive strategy, I'm telling you here, because um, to stay afloat in, a, in, in was what essentially is a cottage industry. We're not corporatized and so on yet, um, although that will happen. But as a natural health, preventative health industry, um, we've got to be a little bit different in order to stand out and be successful in my belief. Um, I think doing the same as everyone else will lead you down a very rocky road of exhaustion and burnout and not a great deal of income as a result. So um, we're going to explore how to do that today. Um, nowadays, I live here on the farm at uh, Binnaburra, just outside but Byron Bay, and I've got three beautiful little girls. And this strategy I'm showing you has allowed me to not only to implement my mission and put some really good work into the world, but also, you know, have some great time and uh, family time and so on. So I'm really about helping practitioners have strong businesses, which then helps them reach more people and create a tipping point in society where natural health, preventative health becomes the norm. That's what I want to see. And that's what I believe your practice supporting you is the key uh, linchpin of that. So typically, this is one of my application forms. I've worked with people for, you know, typically around 30K a year. You'll see down here, 29,997 is my annual fee for most people. Um, what I've realised is that the, the failure rate worldwide in natural health and the non-starting rate for preventive health is just so high, it's ridiculous. 
Um, most people who graduate from, depending on the modality, you know, often don't even make it into practice. And if they do, they don't last for five years. Those that tend to go beyond the five years and, and you know, 20 years down the track feel exhausted and fatigued because the model is wrong. Um, so my coaching excludes a lot of other good practitioners. So what we're actually doing, and this is part of the foundation of what I'm doing here, is we're going to create an international business incubator, incubator specifically for preventative health. And the first stage of that is create a foundation group again of practitioners to make this stuff work. So I'm going to tell you how we can be part of that in a minute or soon. But the first up, let's look at this great practitioner career trap we talked about. Now, if you had an income goal of a million bucks, you'd ask yourself, you know, how do I attain that? If you want to attain that goal, how do you get more clients? Now, let's say you're 100 bucks a consult, means you're 10,000 clients a year, means you're going to have to do roughly 200 clients a week for 50 weeks a year. And put your own numbers into that, but that gives you a snapshot. That's a typical practice sort of business plan, if you like. The trouble with that is, of course, that, you know, I don't personally want to be your patient when you're on week 49, I'm patient 199 that week. I think you'll be exhausted and you'll probably resent me even turning up. It's, it's not a sustainable model. Um, the less value, the harder you work, it's less of yourself you can give to every patient and the quicker you'll probably burn out. And this is inherently a disempowering um, paradigm to work to and not going to create this wholesale shift in society around preventative health we're looking for. So I asked, how do we do it differently? And that's if you had a, a million dollar goal, if you could charge a thousand dollars a patient, you'd only need a thousand clients a year. And that's 20 clients a week, which is obviously more doable. The question of course is, well, how on earth do you charge a thousand dollars a patient and do it ethically, you get great results for the patient and um, have everyone happy. So this is how this is what we've created over the years to figure this out. First up, the avatar client is the first thing we're going to talk about. And secondly, your signature protocol. And this is before we go into how to promote them via the seminars and webinars, because it's important you have the right thing to offer. So let's first up look at your avatar client and think about your ideal client. Who, who have you helped successfully before? And who do you most intersect that with who do you most enjoy helping? Um, but also who's got a track record of trying to get better and demonstrating behaviours like time, spending time and money and energy trying to get better. In other words, they're motivated. Now, that person, if you think of an actual person like that, if you could fill your practice up with just people like that, you'll probably become very, very successful in my experience. So what we're going to do is actually help an avatar client find a problem they've got and identify it as being costing them 10 grand in time, money or effort or, or everything. So here's a little exercise we put you through is describe the problem in detail. Describe their health concern or their whole lifestyle issue, um, how it's impacting them, and help quantify it for them. What's it costing in terms of time, money, and effort? It could be time off. It could be time off work. It could be um, um, time they, money they spend on treatments that aren't working, effort they spend on the same thing. And what's the emotional impact on them, on their family? And extrapolate that cost. If nothing changes, what what would happen for them? What's the real cost in 10 years, 20 years if this condition persists? So let's really give them a clear snapshot. And the more you can target your marketing message to this avatar client, and when I say your marketing message, this is going to be about your seminar or webinar, you want to be something, everything to someone, not something to everyone. So the more you understand that person intimately and what it's costing them and what their aspirations are, the more you can really speak to them. So um, rather than just, uh, sorry, apologies, um, what most practitioners do is advertise their modality. You know, they say, I'm a naturopath, for example, or I'm an acupuncturist, and it doesn't mean a great deal to the average person. Here's a case study, Charmaine Renault, who's got an incredible clinic up on the north side of Brisbane. She came to me and we rebranded her as a women's healing centre. And you'll see her terminology. She says, are you juggling life? You're overwhelmed, exhausted or stressed. Be calm, become calm, happy and healthy and energised again. Now, that headline has created so much business for her on us that, that women come through the door and say that's me I want to be in here as opposed to acupuncturist she was going okay and doing quite well this is taking it up a notch to the fact she's gone up to another level entirely that's what the website looks like um, as an adaptation of it you now I'm just getting a couple of questions unfortunately in this mode oh guys I'm going to leave questions right to the end if that's okay um, because uh, the software doesn't seem to be allowed me to open them up and answer them. So I'll, I will come back to your questions at the end. So if you can hold them for me, it'd be great. And I'll spend as much time as we need. Now, once you've got this avatar client figured out, we, we create what we call a signature protocol. Or in fact, we encapsulate what you're already doing perhaps for people 
and turn it into a protocol as opposed to just a series of treatments. This is an example of an infographic one of my clients created. Um, so let's look at what percentage of your client base you're currently seeing needs to see you over a number of treatments rather than just session by session, or one session or two sessions. And the majority for most people is quite, you know, most, most practitioners say most people need to see you ongoing, if, depending on your modality and who you're treating. But then consider how many, what percentage of these people who need it actually invest in a number of sessions? How many actually do it and follow through and are completely compliant with what you'd like them to do? And if you're like most practitioners I've met, is that those numbers are very different. In other words, there's a whole bunch of people walking out the door not getting what they really need from you because they're kind of dictating the terms on which they engage with you, not you. Now, so it's kind of solutions or sessions is, is the way I look at it. And I'm going to suggest that most of, most of your clients actually want solutions. And they, in fact, to attain that, they need more than just a treatment. They also need, you know, lifestyle prescription. They need coaching and help in changing behaviours and patterns. Um, they need education about their, their health and their habits. They need to understand what they're doing. Um, they want guidance and reassurance are on the right track, as well as emotional support in a lot of cases to make lasting changes. Now, on top of that, this is really important. They probably, I, I believe that, most patients would prefer to have an understanding of the full scope of treatment they're actually in for rather than just sort of expect to get better in one or two sessions. And that's fairer to you and it's actually more, it's fairer to them. So the, and with that comes a sense of investment and buy-in with the health outcome. So it's a real win-win for everybody. And this is not about over-servicing. It's quite the opposite. It's about formalising the service you actually prefer to offer as a protocol and maybe enhancing it. Because most people are walking around looking for someone to plug into Desperate to find someone to tell me, you know, give me an answer a ho that's holistic and gives me a real, a real solution rather than some sort of band-aid or, you know, I'll try this for a couple of sessions and move on. We want to go and commit to something and get better at, and get better and have someone feel confident in that process. Um, so a case study here is Peter Mills up in Brisbane. Um, I worked with him for many years and he, he created restoration programs which formalised uh, what he was already doing really with clients, which is, you know, seeing people for 120 bucks to go. Now clients spend about $1,500 up front with him and they get much better results because they're bought in and they, they're, they're compliant um, and they understand what they're in for and they're part of the journey with the practitioner now. Uh, Michelle's done the same. She's in Canberra as a naturopath and she's off around the world travelling and she's got passive income rolling in a clinic while she's doing that as a result of this, this program. And Charmaine, we mentioned before, you know, was doing sessions at 85 bucks and really quite worn out. And now her average sale with clients is, is $1,700 and gets much, much better results. And I keep preempting that thing. It's about the results for the clients, not just the money, obviously. But the two can go hand in hand. And I realise money is not always a very easy topic to, to bring up in, in the natural health space. <coughs> this system is what Alex Perry, who's a client in Canberra, Nearly, nearly $100,000 in fertility program sales once he implemented this and created this infographic and um, actually sold this and promoted it from webinars and seminars, the way I'm going to show you guys now. So your ideal practice should be pre-booked, pre-paid clients every week, you know, 90% compliance with exceptional real results and a wait for your patients and a waiting list for new patients. That's the, the wholesale shift that can happen once you start promoting protocols as, and enrolling people in protocols rather than just session by session. Um, and I said, people, they turn up on time, they never miss sessions, they respect your time, they buy into their outcomes and they feel confident with their own treatment. So, you know, better referrals, better retention, everyone wins. And the question, of course, would be, well, why don't people offer these levels of care if, if this is such a good idea? What's stopping people doing it? And the number one reason is really you don't, maybe don't have a signature treatment protocol ready. And it's, it's amazing to me once I work with someone, they actually, we help them create a protocol, how quickly it becomes their go-to thing to give clients who it's ideal for. It, it sort of has its own, it's like build it and they will come kind of mentality. Um, and secondly, there's an enrolment process, which I, you know, prescription or enrolment, it's not selling, it's just about, you know, giving people what's good for them. Um, and you, if you haven't got that skill set, it's something you can learn. And it's also, you've got to make sure you're attracting the right type of clients who are motivated enough. This is about knowing your avatar client and getting your messaging right. So there's three or four components to it. 
but you can learn them all. And, you know, we're here to learn them here today. Um, interestingly, the, there's examples out in the market now in the fitness industry, particularly protocols and programs are really, really popular. Um, they're, they're accepted without question. Um, in a lot of areas, fitness being the obvious one, um, preventative health is the next obvious place for this to become a regular thing. Possible things to think about, including in your protocol, is it, it can be as simple as formalising what you would otherwise do for someone anyway. Secondly, you can put information in there, and that can be seminars and emails and SMSs and newsletters and so on. Accountability and coaching can often come into it. You can use your team's time or your staff's time or treatments, not just your own. Or you can even outsource treatments from outside your clinic to bring into the protocol if it's ideal for the client. You can include the SMAs, the group consults, which we're going to talk about in the webinar here. Uh, products, supplements, devices, all that kind of thing can come into it. Or you can do special events. Just consider what your clients are currently spending money on anyway and become their primary health provider. That's really what this is about. Uh, so, you know, specific to their, their, their particular health goal, their avatar needs. So... You know, think about this. It doesn't have to be just your personal time and exertion. In fact, Peter Mills, I showed you there before, he spends about two hours total with every client that comes in on that basis, same with Charmaine, and his team do the rest. But he's the lead practitioner, which is a staffing model we, we can teach you in another webinar, which um, allows you to do that. Um, you don't necessarily have to offer single sessions ongoing once you have these in place. And look for these high leverage things like the short and the shared me medical appointments. So it's got to be what's ideal for you coupled with, or, you know, intersecting, dovetailing with what's ideal for the patient. So you don't want to just do everything for the patient because it's right for them. You've got to actually make sure that you're looking after yourself first. Excuse me. Um, it's kind of like fit your own mask first. In other words, don't burn out because you're no good to anyone if you do. Your protocol needs to be presented as a shortcut. So you've got to show this to them. It might take, you know, three months to see a result. But it's a shortcut compared to maybe spending three years doing the wrong thing and not getting results at all. And that's your job to have explained it in those terms. So that's one of the key things with the protocol is, yeah, it is a bigger investment for people um, and it's a bigger investment of time, money and energy, but it's a shortcut in the scheme of things. And you want to make sure they understand that this is a small investment compared to the value they receive. And this is where it comes back to coming to helping them understand where they're spending 10,000 bucks or more on this problem. Make sure a thousand dollar protocol, for example, look like very, very good value suddenly compared to what they're already spending, which is genuine. All right. Um, and as I said, the, the, the SMA, the business hack, I call it, is going to be a really good option for a lot of people here in terms of putting that in place as their protocol. And I'll talk to you about that shortly. So if, you, if you're uncomfortable with the thought of selling or pushing or, you know, um, it's just recognise that the way we teach this is that both parties, you and the patient, need to feel good about the transaction. So in other words, you do too. You can't be over-servicing from your end and feeling resentful. You need to be excited about it. They need to be excited and informed and, um, you know, it's a win-win for everyone. So there's a bit of a process in that, um, but it's really about you taking control of the client relationship rather than the other way around it's a formulaic process and it needs to come without any kind of sales pressure because you're in health and you're with vulnerable people this is not about selling anything to anyone um, and it, there's, there's ways to remove that pressure which we can teach you in, in more depth but just recognize that if you're feeling stuck on that point it's probably the grounds for a further conversation about it with me or someone like me to help you through that process um, so these are the sort of results people get. You know, once they build the protocol and start offering it, it becomes really second nature because they know the results are there. They know that the patients love it and it just becomes really, really simple for everyone to do. So the big question then, of course, is how do you attract signature clients to go into your protocol um, or attract clients to go into your signature protocol? And the key thing with this is, you know, as I said, they're spending a fair chunk of time, money and energy with you. And you obviously have to know your stuff. I'll take that for granted. We take that as written that you know what you're doing here and you're good at what you're doing. Um, but they need to trust you. And it, but the, the paradox is that most of the time for, them, for us to trust someone, we kind of need to meet them first. So get your message right. In other words, know what your avatar client wants and speak to that. But then recognise that they need to trust you, but they need to also meet you first. Because people buy on emotion that justify with logic. In other words, they'll engage with you on an emotional basis, saying, oh, yeah, I feel really understood here and so on. But they'll go home and 
kind of tell their husband or their wife about it. So, well, they're, they're really well qualified and I'm going to get big results and I was spending 10,000 bucks a year on this anyway and blah, blah, blah. So there's a logical brain, there's an emotional brain, appeal to the emotional brain up front, but then give them the stuff to justify it afterwards. But the emotion they most need to feel is trust. And trust, people trust experts and those with authority. And it's your job really to present yourself as a genuine authority in your given area, in your, in your chosen topic or your specialty area of special interest. Authority is good for your marketing and your patient outcomes because it justifies your fees and it builds trust. Trust makes it safe for them to engage or enroll with you. Full engagement creates compliance and compliance, of course, it gets better results for the patient. So there's a ways to help yourself gain this or recognize. It's more about authority recognition more than creation. So we're not trying to put any bullshit into the market here. We're trying to really make sure that people understand how good you are at what you do and, and the level of uh, skill you have and how you can help them. One way, of course, is go collect more qualifications and put that on your wall, which is fine. Um, you can write a book and be published or publish papers and speak in conferences. Um, be interviewed in the media is always a good one, but it's hard to manage and, you know, it comes at inopportune moments often, quite often. Um, but the most controllable and simple thing I believe you can do from experience is help you to, is to get on stage and host your own webinar or a little community seminar. Um, once you're on stage, people see you as an instant authority in a topic by virtue of the fact you're actually speaking on it and you're hosting a, a talk. So this is, this is my number one strategy over the years, I've realised. Of the hundreds of things we've done, this is probably the number one. Um, and I love it because it helps you help impact as many people as possible. Every, everyone in health I know says, I want to impact and help people. Um, and it removes resistance to enrolment. It, 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 it makes your kind of sales enrolment process really, really simple. And I've worked with so many people now who've created so much extra income in their practice as a result in the immediate term. So now 10, 15 grand is pretty standard and it can be a whole lot more in additional revenue that otherwise wouldn't have come in, which might sound like a lot straight off, but you think about it, if you have a, a thousand, if you're comfortable with a thousand dollar protocol you're offering, that's 15 protocols. It's not a great deal if you consider that you could be speaking to an audience of 10, 20 or 100. Even. And it gives you less of your own personal time and effort and it puts you as more of the lead, the lead practitioner, the expert, more so than just the grunt doing the grunt work and being, you know, face to face all the time with patients. So you, can't, you become a spokesperson, if you like. Now, it's a little snippet of info that changed my life years ago was this: is that an organism the same size or smaller than you will feedback according to its beliefs about you. In other words, if you go and start telling, you know, your husband or your your, your your bowling team that you're now an expert in a specialty area of medicine in preventative health, they will tend to feed back and say, oh, don't be silly. You're just, you know, you're just Bob or Jack or whoever. They'll believe what they believe about you and that will dictate how they see you. On the other hand, an organism much larger than you will feed back according to your beliefs about you. So this is, this explains the rise of all these internet gurus, right? You got young, someone gets out and knows how to run a computer and has this area of specialty expertise and promotes themselves as an expert, an expert in that area worldwide by the internet or, or by a stage or a presentation, their beliefs about themselves tend to be the dominant ones that get believed in the market. So this offers a marvellous opportunity. What it's telling you is go bigger. It's much easier than staying small. Rather than trying to convert old patients or ex-patients or you know, people you know into this new way of seeing you, this is about recognising yourself as far larger and putting yourself out in a larger level, and it's actually easier to do so. Consider you've probably got the skill of enrolling people anyway into protocols of some description, whether they're formalised or not. It's probably something you do 10 times a day or more with patients, and you're probably quite good at it. You probably just don't recognise that that's what you're doing. Is That's commonly the case with health practitioners. So in other words, what we're going to do is take this unrecognised skill of enrolling or engaging someone in a health outcome and give it a new platform. So we're simply going to take what you're already doing, follow a process here and put you either on stage into a small or a large community work workshop or a seminar um, or a webinar such as this one. So, it's some, so hopefully you can see the opportunity in this is if you see yourself as bigger than probably maybe you did you know, 15 minutes ago in terms of your health specialty, um, there's a massive opportunity for you to go big with this and really make an impact on the people you want to help and, and see the change you, you want to see in the health space in our community. So 
there's some misconceptions. These are the things that tend, tend to stop people um, from moving ahead on this strategy. And one is they feel it should be some innate skill they learn and, you know, Tony Robbins is born and not made. And, you know, that's actually not the case. With, this is, you can learn the skill, you can practice it and you get better at it. Um, like anything else, it's something we can learn. I'm showing you here now the process in that. Number two is that if you feel you're too shy to, to get on stage or a webinar, um, some of the most shy retiring clients I've worked with have been the most effective on stage. And thirdly, it's all about the speaking is actually not the case. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So number one is you need to learn it. You need to practice it. It's a process and confidence will come from getting guidance and feedback and coaching, repetition and effort whilst following the formula. So there's a formula to follow that will work for you. And it's a matter of repeating, repeating, rinse and repeat to the, to the formula and you'll get good at it, I promise you. So don't feel that's an obstacle. Um, introverts can be great speakers. Authenticity is a key thing here. You follow a formula, have integrity, um, which I know you will, and have belief and enthusiasm for what you do and get training on it and you can become an exceptional presenter. These guys, Charmaine and Peter, are good examples of that. Very, very nervous about the whole concept, but when they got up, they... You know, the personal growth journey was amazing, but it was really most gratifying for them to see what impact they could have and how big the, the people actually saw them, how important they were seen and how respected they actually were by the time they actually did this. And the last thing is it's not about the speaking. So a one-hour webinar or a talk, for example, it can't really change your life, but it can be a powerful turning point or catalyst to creating the life you want. You know, like this one, for example, this is not going to give you everything you need. It's impossible in an hour. But it can set you on the path and give you the understanding, the awareness, and some of the tools to get you on the right track. And that's really the key thing with a, with a, with a talk. It's not about trying to fix people on the spot. It's about spurring them to action. And we call it in the business converting them. It's about converting um, how many people sit in your audience will take action as a result of your talk. And your job is to actually give them a course of action to take. Now, you're sure you've read books or attended a seminar and did nothing further with it. Thought, that's a great idea, and then did nothing. We all do it. Your job as a presenter, your obligation, I believe, is to make this a pivot point for those who are genuinely interested in making a change to, to do so. And that's about giving them a definite course of action. So um, in order to do that, you need to know your audience really, really well, better than they know themselves. So you know your avatar client profile that we did earlier. They need that you need to consider what do they need to believe about you in order to feel trusting of you. In other words, authority, experience, trust, qualifications. They need to know that you know they're not the first person to ever tried this with you. Um, they want to feel that you are the answer to their questions, their, their problems. Excuse me. Secondly, you need to think what they need to believe about themselves. In other words, they need to know and feel they can really do it. You can't. You're going to make it simple enough, easy enough doable enough for them to, for, in order to make it, um, they don't sit there going, well, I've just ruled myself out because I'll never make that happen. It's too complicated, for example. And then they need to also feel that your service or your protocol, or your call to action is designed with them in mind. It needs to be a perfect fit for where they're sitting in terms of their needs, wants, hopes, desires. Then we follow this formula. First up, the first part of the formula is to own the room. And that's by getting their attention with a big promise and get on stage and tell them what you're going to tell them. You know, like I told you at the beginning of this workshop, these are the three things you're going to learn. And at that point, people should be, ideally, you're going to be sitting there either opting in saying, well, I'm in the right spot. I'm glad I've got this time to listen to this. Or, um, you know, this is not for me. I can walk out now. But give them that up front. Get permission for your style, which I tend to get a bit sloppy with these days, but it's about saying, look, I'm going to move quickly and you have to take notes. And also get permission to pitch, in other words, get permission and tell them you're going to give them a course of action at the end of this workshop <coughs> that will, you know, that is going to be right for them in order to get, they're not going to let them walk out with that, you know, and the next phase and the next thing to do and tell them you're going to do that so that you, when you finally get to that point in the presentation, it doesn't come as a surprise. So that's the setup. The second part of it is to what we call your hero story. And this could be either you or a patient where you talk about the situation that the patient was in or you were in personally and the problem and how it was affecting you and how, you know, the, the cost of the problem and what, what it felt like. And then you talk through the discoveries and the results and, and what happened as a result. 
So you're telling a fairly personal story here that really engages people as well as presents you as it's just kind of like a, um, it's a, like a, it's like a testimonial or a, or a case study, if you like, it's setting you up as the expert in their eyes because you're telling a story of what happened and it engages you and it makes you human and makes you very approachable. Then you go into the content. So once you've set up what you're talking about, you've t- told them the story of how you got to this point, you give three pieces of core content. No more than three because people get confused by too much more. Three core things. Each of them needs to relate to the big promise. And illustrate it with case studies, um, testimonials if you're allowed to use them in your modality, but definitely with research, proof, um, and tell stories. Now, people get bored in lectures. This is In health, there's a big tendency because, you know, speaking tends to be focused on conferences and things. Uh, which, which are about lectures and universities and so on. Um, but in this context, speaking is about telling stories. People, you know, when you're a kid, my kids, if I want to tell them a lecture about something, they ignore me. But if I really wanted to listen, I'll tell them a story and they'll tune into it and get engaged in it and their emotional body is, is engaged. And we're the same as adults. So whatever you want them to know, tell a story. And your themes for stories are things like, you know, what not to do. Another big one is why it's not your fault. You know, so that's a, a really good one. If, if I remember hearing a presentation on um, diabetes years ago when I was consulting for Diabetes Australia. It was very much along those lines of, you know, diabetes actually isn't your fault because everyone tells you it is. But, it's you know, there's, there's larger things at play and there was a whole sort of story around that which was made people feel good and feel better and more empowered in themselves rather than being picked on telling them to go do some more exercise because they're too fat. Um, how you went from A to Z. So tell the story of the success story. A case study is a great, uh, or, or a research, a piece of research is a great way to tell a story, um, outlining the research and how it came about. And, and the last one I really like is, you know, why doing nothing is not an option. So think about, you know, what, this is just not acceptable that you do nothing because this is, you know, either life or death or it's too, it's too important not to, um, you know, I told you this up front. So doing nothing in your practice and just falling into the great practitioner career trap, that is not an option here. You know, if you value your time, what you're doing, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do something different. So this is how you, this is how you get your message across, if you like. Now, an important part here, before you go into the close or the pitch, um, is you, you have a transition. And that's where you move from teaching into inviting action. And if you, I'm going to actually, I'll, you can actually watch me in this seminar, in this workshop, I'll actually transition from teaching into this is how we close. This is the next course of action. You can see it. And it's a fairly subtle but a very open thing. You're not trying to sneak it in. You're just trying to tell people, look, now this is what you need to do. This is what you've learned. Now this is what you're leading to do. This is the next step. Um, and then the close is where you make an offer. You remove all the risk if you can, and that may remove you know, addressing some of the elephants in the room about, you know, their misgivings about what, could happen or you know if there's a guarantee involved we can sometimes work a guarantee around that um give incentives to give action make it action today because people typically won't do it next week or the week after after they've heard you talk they want to make it's a today or not kind of thing okay and the key thing here is <clears throat> to simply do it um a lot of people do talks and don't do a close or don't make an offer because <clears throat> apologies I'm talking too much and not drinking enough water the reason they don't offer, don't make an offer is that, you know, it removes the possibility of rejection. You know, if I don't offer anything, no one can say no. But I'm going to suggest here that the obligation here to your uh, participants in your presentation or your attendees is give them the next thing to do because they'll be looking for it. Not everybody, but there'll be one, ones in the audience who jump on the edge of their seat saying, yes, I want to do more. How do I do it? Don't let those people down. <coughs> so this is the sort of results that we're seeing in the market. Peter, and we've talked about earlier, has about 20 odd people in every seminar. He averages about eight conversions per seminar um, from an initial consult to um, is, is sort of his first thing. So they go from a seminar into an initial consult. Um, so eight out of 20, it's not too bad, it's pretty good. And they, then he has six initial consults, or sorry, eight initial consults. And that's six or six out of eight of those will qualify and want to go ahead with the protocol, which is a $1,500 or so protocol. Net results can be nine or 10 grand every time he does that. He does one seminar every couple of months, creating, you know, ostensibly $50,000, $60,000 in additional income uh, for the practice. And his protocols only require a couple of hours of personal exertion. You know? So that's a rough outline. And that, you know, they all slightly different, but that's a, 
a good indicator of what's available. Charmaine, again, um, 10 people, just little seminars in her, in her practice, um, really intimate, four or so people will convert onto her protocol directly from that seminar at $1,700 each. So there's a net result of nearly 7,000. And she does every, every couple of months to do a seminar, creating an extra 40K a year. And it, the bigger, maybe the bigger benefit, obviously, arguably, is that, you know, Shine's level of confidence and purpose and her presence has just grown. And she's really living her, her dream and living her truth um, because this is stuff she cares passionately about and loves communicating it. And she's really stepped into that role as spokesperson for it. So much so she's now speaking on local radio as a guest quite regularly. And, you know, she's really become a presence in the community and a spokesperson for, for women everywhere who are feeling stressed and overwhelmed. Graham's a, a guy I've worked with for a lot of years over from Tari in just a while, a little country town. And he's trying to launch uh, this retained neonatal reflexes out of his traditional chiropractice. And he is an unknown modality in a small town. He was very nervous about it. And he started running these monthly clinics, webinar, seminars in his clinic. And he asked families to come along and invite all the local doctors. And it created this sense of community and support and trust because this is all about how to help kids with learning difficulties. And families in that position were feeling pretty under-supported. And his seminars have become this kind of focal point for those families to go and find some, some A, network and support, also, you know, some solutions. So nowadays, his 30% or more of his practice is all about this new modality and he's loving it and he's seeing it being an international, an international role for himself open up. Um, so much so he's submitted a paper and been accepted to speak at the uh, Applied Kinesiology International Conference in, in um, Edinburgh this year. So he's really on the path for a worldwide impact. And this has started with getting up in front of half a dozen people in the back room of his clinic on a Thursday night in Tari. So really exciting what's possible as a result of this. Now, it's worth looking into it, that presenting and running this sort of stuff can turn, this is kind of a, another level bonus here, but it can turn your signature protocol into intellectual property that can be arguably bigger than you. Um, Michael Ridgway is a guy I, spoke, I worked with many years ago now, and I helped him launch the Ridgway Method. And... That was a, a, a series of treatments and a, a, a specific modality in physio. He was fed up with physio and he thought, I'm going to do this differently or not at all. So I helped him create this uh, to encapsulate what he's doing in the clinic as a protocol. He called it the Ridgeway Method. Um, before long, we started selling training to other, other physios. Started as a one-day training. It's now a, quite an in-depth course. He has hundreds of physios all over the country running his Ridgeway Method. And it's more than just a protocol. It's also sort of a marketing tool and a point of difference in the market. Um, it's really created a movement within physiotherapy and a very awarded physiotherapist as a result. But real, real disruptive thinker. Um, and this is available for you guys as well. Look, Martin Harris is another, uh, is another client I've worked with many years. He's a very well awarded pharmacist in New Zealand. We've got a couple of pharmacies. He helped, write, helped him write this book and be published. Uh, the real truth about balancing prescription medicine with your complementary medicine. So it's really about how do you, you know, what advice can a pharmacist give you um, along with your prescription, along with natural health remedies, which, which was a gap in the market, which is still really a gap in the market. If you think about it, you sort of either go to the naturopath or the chemist and, the, you know, the two never meet. Um, Martin saw a gap for this and we helped him be, create himself as a leading expert in that area. He now has... Not only his own two stores, he started with one shop, now he's got two very successful shops in Auckland. Um, and they're both doing this protocol, so offering this to, to patients, you know, day in, day out, or customers. And uh, now has about 75 other pharmacists doing the same in New Zealand. So he's turned his signature protocol into intellectual property, which is then saleable. And, you know, this will be something Martin will take worldwide in the next couple of years because there's still a gap in the market worldwide where, you know, the pharmacists and they all stock natural remedies. None of them know really how to sell them or offer them and where they fit into. Um, David Norris is a guy I've worked, just started working with at that last workshop we just ran uh, literally three weeks ago. Now, he's just created uh, a memory health uh, protocol, which has been running successfully some time. He is currently, and we've, we've now called it the Norris Protocol, 
and he's really understanding that not just running about a bunch of seminars here, that he wants to create a movement aimed at introducing memory health scans into every Australian GP practice. So he's identifying an area of medicine which is currently under, um, it's just not seen as, I don't even, I can't, I'm, I'm lost for words. What's the word? It's, it's, just, it's not out there at the moment, right? And it needed. A lot of people out there, you know, on the, on the border, flirting with that dementia, on the borderline with memory health, and he's got a really, really good uh, a diagnostic protocol and a treatment protocol, which he feels should be an item number that every GP can access. So that's what's blossomed for him. As a result, we did the workshop here together a couple of, three weeks ago, and in that time, he's recognised that he's got something far bigger to give than just a group of seminars. Interestingly, David is currently speaking to about 45 uh, seniors at a talk in Brisbane as we speak now and presenting. He's doing his first presentation uh, of the protocol and enrolling people at the presentation as we speak. So watch this space. You'll hear what his results have been like very shortly. Um, in the next webinar, perhaps I'll share that one. <laughs> So the obvious thing here is, okay, well, this is good, Adam. Where do you find an audience from? Because you need to have people to speak to, whether it be online or, or live. And the, the first one is you go back to your own database of current previous patients and invite those people along. Um, secondly, you look at your colleagues' databases and how, do you, um, how can you offer something that's of value to your colleagues' patients that isn't sort of uh, directly competing with their, their offering? Um, and quite often that's a really easy way to do it because people want to support you with this. You also look at JVs or joint ventures with other health-related providers. In other words, where does your client spend money otherwise? The health food shop or the pharmacist or wherever um, in order to help them get better. And if you can go and ask the health food shop owner, for example, look, I'm running this workshop to help your clients um, with this and they'll probably spend more money in your shop as a result. Uh, most will be very happy to help promote that for you. And then you look at joint ventures with other business databases. Um, one of my clients, Rosa in Sydney, Rosa Goodella from Haberfield Natural Health, is really successful running little workshops, promoting them through the local hairdressers and cafes because all her clients go to those places and all her avatar client goes there. So let's go into this bonus section about SMAs. But first, let's recap. So I got a bunch of feedback prior to the webinar and it indicated you needed you know, more exposure in the marketplace or better marketing that would work because most, most people in health have trouble with marketing. That certainly was reflected. In other words, you're spending money that's not working for you and sort of under, under recognized in the market, if you like. You needed more A class clients. So, more people who are really willing to work closely with you to get good results as opposed to kind of expecting quick fixes and not wanting to spend anything with you in terms of time and money. Um, most needed more income, but at, in, in, in line with that, was most people had not enough time and too many patients that needed more time for money leverage. In other words, they wanted more income, but they couldn't see a way to get it without just working harder. And that was the overwhelming feedback was that. So in order to do that, this is, the, you know, just recapping here, you need to work on your business. So study your craft and don't do it by yourself. Don't, you know, don't make mistakes on your own. Uh, follow a system that's been proven and tested. Secondly, Signature protocols, and I can't stress this enough, is that I think the signature protocol as something you can offer to people is the, the, the turning point for so many practitioners I work with becomes the key, um, the key metric by which your practice can, or the key, key catalyst or pivot point by which practice can then move into the right direction to a new, a new model, a new business model and avoid the career trap. And thirdly, uh, present from stage or webinar to create authority and engage new prospective clients and become this, you know, known, known and recognised as an authority in your, in your niche. So how do you do this in your practice in the simplest possible way? And, you know, as with everything, you can do it the hard way or the easy way. Um, and I want to consider that you wouldn't, invent your own modality before you went out and wanted to treat patients. You go and study someone else's modality and learn how to do it and improve on it from there maybe. But, you know, you go and do basic training. Whereas business is the same and speaking and presenting is the same. You use a formula to grow your practice too. Don't make mistakes that you can easily avoid. You know, so get the, get the shortcut is a, is a simple way to do it. Now, I shared with you my vision and my mission for what we're trying to do out here. And, and with the incubator the business incubator we're creating is really about empowering as many practitioners as we possibly can around the world. Um, but my highest leverage activity right now is to teach people like you 
to get on stage and create authority and put and, and follow these strategies. In other words, you know, if I can help um, a couple of hundred people this year go out and speak and learn to present like this, and you can all go out and do, you know, impact another hundred or thousand people each, the ripple effect of that is the highest leverage activity I can put in place. But it's also the quickest way I can help anyone in health leverage their time and income to empower as many people as possible with this unique health message or protocol. And I'm looking to create a new foundation group for the business incubator. So the opportunity here is to do some training with me. And I've been, I wasn't going to do this again this year, this half of the year anyway, but Anne and Ben have invited me to come to Melbourne for this because they had so many practitioners down there who wanted to do it. And 23rd, 24th, and 25th of March, we're doing a three-day training on this topic. Now, it's not for everybody. It's really only suitable. I only want people who are absolutely serious about letting me help you put on one event or webinar. Get your message out as many as possible. Help as many people as you can. And creating protocol as well as that, you know, streamlining your solution protocol and make a minimum of 10 grand or more. So you need to at least want that out of it. Otherwise, I'd suggest it's probably not worth it for you. Um, they're, they're results that I can promise you if you come in and do this with, with full gusto and with boots and all in, that will come very, very simply for you. And the other condition is, is that I want to be able to document your success and your process as part of the foundation for the business incubator. So this training is a one-to-many health promotion training, it's called. Um, everything you need to promote and present your own webinars and seminars. Um, how to enrol clients in your unique, your, unique, your unique signature protocol and how to create your own pregnant protocol first up. Um, how to deliver group consults and create a minimum of 10 grand in extra revenue in the next three months as a result. So everything's going to be in there. Um, it's three days of implementation workshop is what we call it. Three components and the training component is um, creating your protocol, identifying your avatar, fine-tuning your marketing message, plan and create your presentation actually secure JVs and audiences while you're at the weekend. You'll actually get these in place. Um, you'll create your event and webinar invitations and promotions on the spot. You'll learn to tame the technology and, and understand what you need in order to offer webinars. You'll also craft your transition and practice your clothes. In other words, it's implementation, it's not learning. You've got to do the work and you'll walk out ready to present a seminar or webinar. This is the sort of thing it looks like. Let's give you a snapshot. It's a templated workshop. It's quite a thick workbook. We go through it and you fill the blanks in as we go. So it's really a process-driven system that has been done many, well, it's been done three times before. It used to be a $2,500 workshop I ran back in 2015, um, but it is templated and it will, it's kind of idiot-proof. <laughs> no offence, but it's, it makes it really simple. Second component is a mentoring. So I'm going to, I'll am going coach you through this process and give you the chance to practice a presentation or give you the feedback you want or the assistance you need. I'm at your disposal for three days and you can really milk that to get as much as you need out of it. And, um, you know, without igniting myself, but my coaching in this area is is pretty bloody good because I've been doing the same. I'm pretty crappy at lots of things. This is one thing I'm pretty good at. So um, mentoring for me and then thirdly you get the tools so I'll give you all the swipe files all the PowerPoint presentations event invitations email sequences landing pages <coughs> all my enrollment forms all the stuff I've been using for years and years and years to you know create a, a six seven figure income and they'd be yours to, you can take them away and save you months of wasted effort so you know presentations for example you can just cut and paste my PowerPoint presentation rather than having to do it yourself cut and paste from my event invitation. So just, again, using this as a, um, as a template rather than having to do it all yourself. So the training is, did sell for two and a half grand years ago. The swipe files are valued at a thousand bucks at least, but it really is probably a lot more. <coughs> Total value of the training is three and a half thousand, 3,494. Losing my voice here. But if you want to, the webinar only offer, today only on the webinar is 897 to secure the training today. You can apply now at one-to-many.eventbrite.com.au and the only stipulation is you agree to allow us to document your success and share your story with others. So, you know, I'm in this to make sure you're successful with it. Um, I only want people who are going to really make it work for them and, you know, I want to make this uh, available as part of the incubator to you know, hundreds and thousands of others worldwide eventually. But right now we're looking for some leaders in the pack. So one-to-many.eventbrite.com.au, you can jump on there to um, 
enrol, 897, there's a guarantee in fact with this, and that is 100% guaranteed. If you don't find it to be the most valuable business training you've ever done, um, we're relaxed and confident to go out and make 10 grand or more from your own presentation. Let me know at the end of the workshop and I'll give you money back, no questions asked, because it has to be working for both of us or not. Um, I'm 100% behind that and I don't need your money that badly. I would rather you walk away happy. Um, I'd much rather we walk away both happy and both getting results. So for the first six people who join up with this, I am an enrol in the workshop. There is a, um, that is an early bird price, $8.97. But in addition, first six only, I'll give you an additional 90-minute follow-up coaching call with me. Plus, we'll do your business personality profile that'll help you through any roadblocks and, you know, iron out any sticky points you have that help you ascertain the best presenting style for your personality type. So that's a really in-depth session. It's normally a, a $4.97 for a session like that with me. First six only will include that for you. So um, you can even do it in three monthly installments, $3.30, $2.30 be your deposit today if you'd like to do it and you get backed by your guarantee, by that guarantee. There's no no question asked if it's either the best thing you've ever done business-wise or forget it. Um, one to many.eventbrite.com.au to enrol. Um, I'll and has offered a bit of feedback and I won't play the video here other than to tell you this is the snapshot is that you know this is what she said it's extraordinary feedback and coaching plus a simple process you can really understand um, you know and I she feels you can leverage it on a different level now. Uh, David, he said he was time poor. He had great content to share, but he felt the chaos, his word, was overwhelming. The workshop will give him, gave him the process and support to efficiently take his practice to the next level. Um, Anita is a TCM practitioner from uh, south of um, from the uh, south coast of New South Wales. So it's so, so invaluable. I'm totally clear on my, my business can now be calm, plus I've got the tools to promote it and run it. It's incredible what we did in just three days. And Taryn uh, is a naturopath in Brizzy. Uh, her and her husband, Jonathan, have been successfully winning it, winging it for years, but quite fatigued. And this, she says, has ticked all the boxes for her. A must-do workshop, which I'd done it 17 years ago, <laughs> which is often the um, feedback I get from clients. So let's look now about how to implement these SMAs. It's what I call a business hack. Um, the SMAs or shared medical appointments, John Stevens and Gary Egger are the two masterminds behind this, two visionaries in the health space, in my opinion. Um, shared medical appointments, uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one consultation in the presence of other practitioners and healthcare providers. <coughs> Excuse me. And designed to be a clinical visit with six to 12 other consenting patients of a similar, with similar health concerns. Now, this is big in the US now and becoming mainstream here, but it's about lowering health care costs, getting better outcomes, proving patient satisfaction, um, engaging patients powerfully, peer support, and maximising the patient, the value of patient time spent at the office. In addition, they improve, improve health care provider satisfaction, which is I think is important. The doctors and the people who are doing this say they love doing it because it's working for them. Um, and they get collaboration, communication across all the disciplines within their practice. So that's some of the feedback. But the became, as I said, was, you know, USA was introduced and now internationally been getting great results, mainly with the chronic disease type modality, um, issues like type 2 diabetes and so on. <clears throat> and it's been trialled here in Australia a couple of times in the GP space. Um, but the satisfaction was fantastic and most would actually prefer the SMA to the consultation, the individual consultation from a patient point of view. Um, the provider satisfaction was that the GPs loved it and that's continuing to be the case. Efficiency is obviously for the GP, um, 12 to 1 or to, for the practitioner. And by the way, this works now. We're finding it's working with psychologists, we're, it's working with uh, physios, it's working with uh, osteos, OTs, uh, it's working with naturopaths. Anything that has a, um, a generally around chronic type of conditions that in, require behaviour change that this tends to be appropriate for. And it might be worth noting that if you don't have those sort of patients in currently or you're treating them for something different, it may be that they want that sort of, uh, you know, they might look for a weight loss program, for example, that you can offer within your clinic that you're currently not offering because it, it can expand your scope of services. So this is some of the feedback we're getting from people. Um, and it really is a breath of fresh air for the doctors and the patients and the, the practitioners. <clears throat> so from my point of view, the business benefit is that you get a 12 to 1 return on your time, all right? 
Um, it's working well for privately built practices. So it's not just for GPs or bulk billing. Um, it's unique in the market. So it really makes your clinic distinguishable in the market for being offering something new and exciting. And it creates, as I said, initial, additional revenue stream and even broadens the scope of services you can offer your current clients. Um, and you remember Gary and John did this book, Gut Busters, many years ago in the early 90s. They really uh, created a big stir with this book. They re-released it and they actually do a weight control program for medical shared appointment, right, shared medical appointment, which means you, know, you can actually have all the content and the, the strategy to present a weight control program in terms of all the slides and the, um, all the resources provided for you as an add-on to your current uh, offering in your, in your clinic. So there's a sort of a, a bolt-on aspect to your practice if you like. So this is one of the best innovations in healthcare I've ever seen. And it's a perfect, it, this can be a, a protocol in itself. So it can be the thing you offer at your event, your seminar or webinar can be about presenting the SMA as the offer, as the solution. Or it can be a sort of a bolt-on chronic disease protocol that's done for you. Um, so as part of this partnership offer or the, the, the training offer I've just put up, uh, and coming down to Melbourne to do the three days, one of those days will be a full day SMA accreditation and training with John Stevens, valued at 550 bucks. So that's going to be, so you get accredited, but everything you need to launch and profit from SMAs in your health practice, it's including in the one to many training in Melbourne at the end of the month. So here it is again, guys, this is a webinar special, uh, 897 initial investment or three installments of 332. Includes a bonus, bonus swipe file and the SMA accreditation, which is, you know, about $1,500 worth in itself. And the first six people will enroll, will get a 90-minute consult with me, value of $497. So one to many.eventbrite.com.au, that's open today only. Um, be one of the first six. I'd love to work with you if you're serious about this. And we might even explore where we can take this into in terms of, you know, monetizing your IP and getting you to become a worldwide presence. Um, I will now go to some questions and I'm going to uh, jump over here. Just bear with me while I figure this technology out. Uh, right on. And I'm back here again. So uh, five people asking questions straight away. And cool. All right. So go back to this one. I'll go to questions there, guys. So, um, <laughs> apologies, getting the technology to work on these things is always fun. Um, just type your questions in the box and I'll go through individually. Um, we're right on time. It's the first time I've done a webinar, I've been spot on time. But uh, a couple of regular questions that come up are, if I'm a new practitioner, is this training ideal for me or is this a strategy I should put, on, put in place? And I would say unequivocally, yes. Um, I think you're best off launching as a as an authority, uh, bearing in mind you don't have to be the, you know, you represent the person who's communicating authority information. You know, you can represent other people's research and um, you don't have to invent it all yourself, but definitely you can be the purveyor of this information and set yourself up from the beginning as an authority rather than do it the hard way and, you know, chug away patient by patient. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, if you're new to the game, this is the perfect way to get started. This, this beats um, putting flyers out and, you know, putting your shingle up and hoping people turn up. This is an, an affirmative way to bring new patients through the door and network with other practitioners as you do it. Um, a couple of people in the, in the group here on the webinar have already got uh, webinars in place and seminars <clears throat> and a couple have even got signature protocols. This was asked of me before the webinar. And the question is, you know, how does this all overlay? And my answer to that is really about what we want to do is overlay the, the strategy and the formula for um, the, turning your presentation into a closing presentation, giving people, um, taking them from where they're at now, doing the presentation and then giving them the pitch and giving them a step to do and enrolling people in your clinic as a result. So that's the distinction here. And we can probably to relook at your protocol and, and, fine tune that if you like and make it more valuable and less of your time potentially, you know, make it more suitable to what you need. But really, um, if you can take what you're already doing, you've got a head start, 
and my only question if you're in that situation is are you converting are you turning people into patients or are you just presenting and if you're just presenting that's fine but let's take this the next step and turn this into a marketing tool for you um <clears throat> A couple of people asked too about creating digital courses. So how does this protocol translate into, you know, turning your IP into a digital program? Which is a great question. And the answer to that is uh, it's a direct translation. So we've got some software we can put you onto, which um, the sales process and the whole thing is basically uh, the same process. You just need to create this digital content using a combination of video and um, some documents and so on uploaded into some software that's specifically designed for that task and that way you can start presenting your protocol to international audiences and then of course you're networking and getting your name out and getting uh, in, people invited to your webinar becomes the key strategy you do that internationally through uh, your international contacts and creating international networks um all right maria can't find the three-day training um all right, Maria, I will um, type, uh, let me think. I don't know, I'm not sure what's, that's not coming up on Eventbrite for you, Maria, but what we'll do is um, I'll jump on there shortly and you can type in your email to me and I'll get you an email and make sure you're one of the first six. I'll hold your spot for you. <laughs> All right, so type your email into the message box there for me and I'll line it up with you as soon as the seminar is finished and make sure it's there for you. Not sure why that's not showing up. I'll talk to my technology person, which is currently me, and go and have a hard, hard discussion with him. A um, uh, couple of people asking, is there other? Okay, someone else is saying the event right link is working okay for me. All right, try it. Try again, Maria. It might come up. So uh, it should be a three. It'll just say three thirty-two for the instalment. Anyway. Uh, other questions. Uh, will there be another one after Melbourne? I haven't got a plan, guys, so if you're serious about this, I really would jump in and do it now. I, I don't do a lot of these. I'm considering doing this online course the next half of the year, but I'm, I'm not sure is the honest answer. So um, love you to join us in Melbourne. I can't guarantee when the next one will be. <clears throat> um, you know, it's a fair bit of time and effort on my behalf, and the amount of effort we put into it is intense because I want to make sure everyone gets great results. So um, clear your diary, do what you can, and we'll make sure it's worth your while is really the only thing I could say to you. Um, the regular thing is people say, oh, yeah, this is fine, but, you know, I live in a small town or, you know, my patients don't have the money or, you know, the, 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 the general sense of not being people that have the money for it is a regular one. And um, all I can say to you about that is, is that if you know your avatar client and you're really offering something that speaks to what they <clears throat> care about and need, like Graham Taylor, say, in Taree, tiny, you know, small town, central New South, in New South Wales, so central coast, um, his offer was so specific and he spoke the language of his clients so intimately that they found the money from wherever to go ahead with him because he was the only person offering him, offering that kind of solution. So it's really, it's a matter of uh, priority and need more than it is about affordability for most patients. That's what we've found over the years. And that includes small towns and all sorts of places. Um, you don't have to be living in the middle of a CBD because I often get people in the CBD Practitioners, they're saying to me that um, oh, people in the CBD don't have enough money, but you know, it's, it's, so it's it's perception, um, and it's really about marketing and getting your message right. Um, someone's asking, can we work? What's the go with working one to one? Uh, if you think about doing some one to one work with me, I would suggest. I can certainly I'm open to it, but I want to suggest to everyone that this workshop we're running in Melbourne will be your best starting point for that. Um, We'll work intimately together because there's a small group. There's no more, I think it's up to 16 people or something like that. It's not not big. We'll have some one-on-one -on -one time. We'll get a sense of each other. Um, from there, maybe we'll do some one-on-one -on -one work. But I really would encourage you to come to the workshop as the first step, stepping point there. A, it's more affordable because um, a five grand will cost you to, for a day with me to start with. I'd rather you do the 897, get going and, and make sure you get those results. And then we can look at it because I like those things to be self-funding. Um, but, you know, by all means, drop me an email. I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, someone's asking about, I'm worried about over-servicing clients with protocols, and that's a very common uh, concern. And I 
absolutely respect it. I'm not interested in seeing you do that because um, it'll backfire. It won't work. A protocol is really designed just to encapsulate what's a best for the client as well as um, what you're currently already doing anyway, if you like, you know, so it's and, and maybe leveraging it more. So over-servicing is a concern. Um, it's really needs to have in full integrity that isn't, isn't negotiable. Uh, so it's about what's right for the client first and foremost, but don't under-service is my point. That's probably the point I'm really making is don't want to be giving people less than they actually need and letting them walk away half complete. We want to make sure they're complete and they get everything they can from the experience with you. Um, a couple of people asking about uh, when the incubator might start, the business incubator, and you'll have to stay tuned on that. It's a bigger process, a longer term thing, and this is stage one. Um, I'm hoping by the end of this year we'll have something ready to roll, but it's going to be pretty exciting, and I'm really at set, setting out to see what we can do to transform the way um, health practices run around the world because uh, I think if you're doing what you guys do, you deserve a fabulous living, you deserve good money and you deserve to make the impact you want to make um, and a good practice should be serving you, not the other way around. So with that, this is other questions. I'm going to put the link back up because someone else has asked me for the link on their webinar, uh, which is there. So one to manyeventbritecomau and it's about lunchtime for me. I hope this has been a benefit to everybody. Um, looking forward to seeing you. Some of you jumped on already there with the, um, the Melbourne workshop invite. So I can see I'm going to have a pretty exciting workshop coming up. So I look forward to working with you guys. Um, if you've got any questions on that, feel free to drop me an email. Um, adam at emshed.com. Adam at emshed.com. We'll get you my email. I'll answer those today only because this will close off today. But um, Otherwise, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your trust and spending the time. Look forward to seeing you in Melbourne and uh, seeing what, uh, how much fun we can have putting you on stage and presenting to an audience. All the best, guys.